is enthalpy or delta H. Enthalpy or the heat of reaction is equal to the change in energy plus pressure times delta V. Where E is energy, P is pressure, delta V is change in volume, and delta H is our heat flow. Delta H has lots of definitions because it's a state function. Another definition for delta H is that the products minus reactants is equal to the delta H of reaction. You would get the v values from the table in the back of your notes. So delta H of formation of products minus delta H of formation of reactants. If it's negative, it's exo, positive, endo. Another thing that we can use delta H for is when given a reaction and it's delta H, we can determine if it's endo or exothermic. Because delta H is negative, the reaction must be exothermic. This also tells us that for every two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen, we're going to produce two moles of water and 483.6 kilojoules of energy. Because it's exo, it's a product. Because it's being released. Based on that stoichiometry information, we can convert between grams and energy. So we're starting with 20 grams of oxygen. And for all stoichiometry, you have to convert it to moles. And one mole of oxygen gas weighs 32 grams. Then looking at the balanced equation, one mole of oxygen is going to produce 483.6 kilojoules. And it told us that it's going to be produced so we don't need the negative sign. Multiplying and dividing you get 302 kilojoules. I'm going to pause the video and try this one on your own. I'm going to answer part B first, and that's going to be exo because my delta H is negative. If it's exothermic, it's releasing energy, which means the beaker should get warmer. And to calculate the enthalpy change, I'm going to have to set up my stoichiometry. You should have got in negative 15 kilojoules, though. Start with 14 grams. It's grams, so you have to convert it to moles, and one mole of NaOH weighs 40 grams. And based on the balanced equation, one mole of NaOH is, has an enthalpy change of negative 43 kilojoules. You're going to need the negative because it doesn't tell us if it's being absorbed or released. So make sure that you have a negative on your answer. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. So in this one, we're trying to find the energy released when 8.9 grams of acid is added to water. They gave us the energy released per mole. So, starting with our 8.9 grams of sulfuric acid,
converting it to moles. And they gave us the conversion factor of one mole should produce 75.3 kilojoules. That already told us that this amount would be released, so we do not need the negative sign. Just multiply and divide and you get 6.84 kilojoules. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. This time they want to calculate the change in enthalpy when 5.8 grams of methane is burned. They gave you the conversion factor of for every one mole of methane, 890 kilojoules of energy is released. So you have to convert your 5.8 grams of methane to moles. You use the conversion factor that they gave you. And multiply and divide and you should get 322. They want to know the change in enthalpy though so you do need to have that negative sign. You can either put the negative sign or you can put released because they both mean the same thing. This one you use the enthalpies of formation to calculate the delta H of the reaction. You can get the delta H of formations from the back of your note packet or from the back of a book. So look in the back of your notes and find your delta H of formation of each of these. And then we're going to use the delta H of products minus the delta H of formation of your reactants. So you should be looking in the back of your notes to find the values of the delta H of formation of each of these. Aluminum should be zero. Fe2O3 solid should be negative 826. Aluminum oxide should be negative 1676. And iron should be zero. And these are all in kilojoules per mole. So now we can solve for the delta H of reaction. It's got to be products minus reactants. So it's negative 1676 times the coefficient, which in this case is 1, plus our iron. We have two moles, and each of those have a value of 0. So that's our products minus our reactants, 2 times 0, plus negative 826 times 1. Solving that out, you get negative 850 kilojoules per mole. Use the table in the back of your notes to find your delta H of formations of each of these compounds. Restart the video when you have that. You should have gotten 10, 0, 0, and negative 242. Make sure you're careful on the state symbols because H2O, liquid, solid, and gas all have different delta H of formations. Solving that out, 
you should get 0 plus 4 times 242. And all of that minus 10 minus 4 times 0. And you get negative 978 kilojoules per mole. Go ahead and try the next one on your own. Restart the video when you have it. You should have got in negative 425, negative 393.5, 275, and negative 242 for your delta H of formations. Plugging those in, you have 275 plus negative 242. All of that minus 2 times negative 425 plus negative 393.5. Which gives you a delta H of reaction of 1276.5 kilojoules per mole.